And we're in Psalm 142, please. Psalm 142. The 142nd Psalm. Now, if you notice in your Bible this morning, you probably will notice that above this psalm, there are two titles given to this psalm. It says, Maskil of David. Now, that word maskil means instruction. That's what it means. It means instruction. And what this psalm is this morning, it's a psalm of instruction. And when you take a look at the other little title above the psalm, it says here, A prayer when he, that's David, was in the cave. Now, none of the commentators can tell us just where that cave was or what that cave. It may have been the cave of Adullam before the 400 came to him. We don't know. But there's one thing the psalmist does for us in this psalm. He allows you and I to see into his heart as he once prayed, and when he prayed in desperation. Now, let's listen to the psalmist as he speaks to us in verse number 1. He says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. In the way wherein I, I walked have they privily led a snare for me. I looked in my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me, and no man cared for my soul. And I cried unto thee, O Lord, I said, thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to that reading from His own precious Word. Desperate times sometimes demand taking desperate measures. And you know, child of God, this morning, desperate times can come into our lives without word and without warning. Desperate times, perhaps, where we can find no answer. You know, dear child of God this morning, you and I don't know what desperate times tomorrow could bring. James 4 and verse 14 says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. You don't know, nor I don't know, and there's not one of us in this tabernacle this morning that knows what tomorrow holds for you, what tomorrow holds for me. And this is why the Bible teaches us in Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 1, we're to boast not ourselves of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And this is why I want to take a wee moment just with you unsaved folks here this morning, because you unsaved friends need to know this. 
You don't know what tomorrow's going to bring to you, whereas you don't know what shall be on the morrow. Do you know tomorrow for you, unsaved friend, could mean your life will be all over? Tomorrow could mean for you unsaved in eternity. Tomorrow unsaved could mean for you lost. And don't say it won't be, because it's every possibility that it could be. Oh, you don't know what tomorrow may bring. Tomorrow could see Jimmy on it screwing the lid down on top of you. Now, you say that's an awful thing to say, George McConnell. How could you say that? It's awful because it's true. It could be true for you, unsafe friend. Jimmy could screw the lid down on you tomorrow. And this morning you're not saved. Tomorrow all hope could be gone. Tomorrow God's voice silenced. And remember what Jesus said, unsaved friend, except a man be born again, He cannot see the kingdom of heaven, no matter how good he is. Remember the Lord Jesus said in John 14 and 6, He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man, no matter who he is, Baptist or anybody, no man cometh to the Father but by me. Unsaved friend this morning, listen to me. Tomorrow is eternity hidden from view, and you need to get saved this morning and need to get saved today. You know what the Bible says? 2 Corinthians 6 and 2, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Tomorrow for you could be all forever too late. And today and this morning, dear unsaved friend, you need to seek the Savior who loves you. And you need to seek the Savior who died for you. And you need to seek the Savior who rose again and who now seeks you. And perhaps seek the Savior who is now speaking to you. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. Tomorrow could see you taking a wee ride in a hearse. You see, this is real. This is not myth. We've saw what happened this week already. Out the road, ushered into eternity. Don't you say it won't be you tomorrow. For men, it could be. And I plead with you to seek Christ this morning, for I don't want your blood to be lying at my door if you perish. Seek him now, won't you, and be wise. And seek him this morning. But you see, child of God, this morning, just because you and I belong to the Lord and just because our times are in his hand, doesn't mean that desperate times won't come into your life, nor mine either. And in Psalm 142, David is in a very dark place. David perhaps is at the worst moment in his life. He's abandoned, and he's alone this morning, and he's here this morning, closed in a cave, pursued by his enemies, deserted by his friends. You imagine being in that cave this morning, pursued by your enemies, 
and forsaken by your friends. Let me say something this morning, child of God. It's a lonely place to be. I preached on a tax last Lord's Day morning up on the lifeboat. A tax that's found in Job chapter 19, verse 19, where Job cried, They whom I have loved have turned against me. And maybe this morning, child of God, you're like David. You're in the cave. But look at verse number one this morning of verse chapter of Psalm 142, because here in Psalm 142, we see David praying in desperation. Look at verse number one. We have him crying in prayer. He says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, with my voice unto the Lord, did I make my supplication. Do you know the opening words of this psalm shows me? The opening words of the psalm teaches me this morning. His heart this morning is at breaking point. I wonder this morning, are you at breaking point, child of God? I don't know. I'm just bringing what the Lord has led. And he's crying on to the Lord, and he's abandoned, and he's alone. And child of God, when you feel abandoned and you feel alone this morning, there's that sense of lostness, loneliness, helplessness that pierces the very mind. Wonder you there this morning, child of God. Wonder you in the cave this morning. The there are situations and there are circumstances in life, child of God, and they don't make sense. You see, the writer of Psalm 142 is the mighty psalmist of David. He's the psalmist of Israel. And here's a man after God's own heart. And in verse 1, he comes to this place where nothing makes sense. Everything's against him. Everyone's against him. As Job said, as I shared this last, last Lord's Day morning, Job 19, verse 14, he also said, My kinsfolk have failed, and my familiar friends have forgotten about me. And I'm telling you, that's a lonely place this morning. It's a lonely place. And everything's against them, and everyone's against them, and all he can do is cry. He says a cry. For David this morning in this cave, closed in in the dark, cold, damp cave, all's lost, all seems lost. And there seems to be no way out. There seems to be no escape. There seems to be no light. There seems to be no hope this morning. I cried. It's good to cry, you know. It's good to cry in prayer. You remember Elijah cried to the Lord over the wee dead son of the widow. Elijah cried. His cry saw the revival of the dead child. Jehoshaphat cried in 2 Chronicles 18. He cried. God delivered him from death. I wonder this morning, are you here in the cave like David? You're desperate. You find yourself in this dark, lonely place. No light, no nothing. And perhaps this morning, listen, you're at breaking point. Verse 1, his crying in prayer. Look at verse number 2, his complaining in prayer. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. You know, friend, if there's anything God wants you to do this morning, and God longs for you to do, and God desires for you to do this morning, it's this. He wants you this morning to pour your heart out before him. 
David says, I poured out my complaint. It's not that he was angry with God or he was resentful with God. He simply this morning pours out his complaint and his grief before him. I'm telling you, great men of God have found themselves here. Great men of God. Job says, My soul is weary of my life. I will leave my complaint upon myself. I will speak in, my, in the bitterness of my soul. And in verse number 2, away in the cave, he's crying out to God. He's complaining to God. And he's pouring out his heart. And he's pouring out his soul. And he's pouring out his mind before the Lord. David learns to bring it all out before God. Oh, child of God, listen to me. Here's what the Lord wants you to do. Whatever's burdening you, whatever's worrying you, whatever's getting you down, child of God, God wants you to do this. Pour it all out before me. That's what David did. Oh, child of God, God doesn't want you to bottle up your worries. God doesn't want you to bottle up your cares. God doesn't want you to harbor up all that concerns you. No, because harboring all that does you more harm than good. God wants you this morning, whoever you are, wherever you are in this meeting, to pour it all out before. That means to do with your work, dear. Things isn't good. You bring it out before the Lord. Maybe it's to do with your health. You bring it out before the Lord. Maybe it's to do with your wee lassie. <laughs> you bring it out before the Lord. Maybe it's to do with your wee lad. You bring your wee lad out before the Lord. Because, you see, this is an instruction of Psalm. Crying unto the Lord in prayer. Verse 1, complaining in prayer. Look at his condition in prayer. Verse number 3, when my spirit was overwhelmed within me. I'm telling you, child of God, notice the period. His spirit was overwhelmed within us. We find him now at his lowest point. Things couldn't get any worse for David. Maybe there's someone here this morning and you're facing a situation and you're facing a circumstance and you're at the end of your tether and things don't seem that they can get any worse. I read a wee article the other day, God's Grace in Trying Times, about a, a young man who wanted to go on for this big job in accountancy in London. And he failed the grades. And his mother pushed him and pushed him and pushed him and pushed. And when he failed the grades, his mother said to him these words, What future do you have now? It's an awful thing for a mother to say. Listen, mothers, don't push your children for goodness sake, and you fathers too. Don't push them. Encourage them. Don't push them. Encourage them. There's too many children today, and they're pushed over the edge because parents are that proud they don't want to see them but ordinary people. And she said to this wee lad, what future do you have now? And the wee lad just couldn't take it. And the wee lad got himself closed away in his room 
and the words of his mother pierced his heart almost to the point of suicide. I wouldn't get out of bed for two or three days until I knocked come to the door. And the door knocked, and this businessman was standing at the door and asked for his name, and the mother called for him and didn't want to come down. Come down, she says, there's somebody here who wants to see you. But the mother brought him in, sat him in the living room. He gave himself a wee bit of a tidy up and come down. Are you so-and-so? Yes, I am, said the young lad. He says, I've been hearing awful lot about you at school through different people. Oh, He says, you know, I have a big accountancy firm and I need somebody like you. And the young lad blurted it out. He says, but sir, you don't want me because I failed my exams. And the man says, well, I'm glad you did for that's why I'm here. I want men, young men who can do a job not just because they've passed exam. Will you start with me in Monday? Years later, that young man who thought nothing, his life wasn't worth living because he failed, climbed the ladder in that firm. He became even a, a managing director. What's the point of that story? I'll tell you why you look at verse number 3. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. Do you know when you're at your lowest point, God knows exactly where you are and God knows the way ahead. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. You know, child of God, when all seems lost and there's no way out and there's no way forward, there's always a way forward, but you can't see it now. Ah, but God sees it. The Lord saw to it that we lad didn't get his exams because there was a better path ahead. There's nothing a failure. When God's in it, there's nothing a failure. You remember that? Nobody is a failure when God has their hand in their life. For oh, goodness sake, I left school at 15 years of age, not a brain have I got. The only thing I've got is good looks. And he sees the plots. He says, they have privily led a snare for me. You see the crying in prayer, the complaining in prayer, the condition in prayer. Look at verse 4. You've got the calamity in prayer. I looked in my right hand. And beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. Imagine the pain he felt. There was no man that would know me. You know what David teaches us this morning? David teaches us that mortal man is someone who is as fickle as a twig. His love is fickle. His care is fickle. His faithfulness is as fickle as a twig. And it'll snap in a moment of time. No man cared for my soul. And David's in the deep, dark cave this morning. No man cared for him. No man was there for him. Everyone turned his heel upon him. Wonder you like that this morning, you feel forsaken. You feel forgotten. And you feel this morning the old cave. The old cave, it's closing in round on you. Elvis Presley sung a gospel song called Where No One Stands Alone, and he says this. I may live like a king, in a palace so tall, with great riches to call my own. But there's 
But there's not one thing in this whole wide world that's worse than being alone. There's not one thing in this whole wide world that's worse than being alone. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. Remember, this is a psalm of instruction this morning. Look at verse number 5, we see his confidence in prayer. He says, I cried unto thee, O Lord. I said, <laughs> Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. And you know, child of God, maybe this is where you've been going wrong. For many a times I went wrong the same road. Oh, many a times I done the, made the very same mistake. I spent more times looking around me rather than looking above me. David looked around him, you know, and there wasn't one sight nor sound of anybody that loved him or cared for him. As he was in the cave, ah, but he looks above him now. He's not looking around him. And he says, hold on a minute. Thou art my refuge. You know, in Psalm 46, we read these words. Verse 1, God is our refuge. A very present help in trouble. Child of God this morning, God saying to you, stop looking around you. Look up. I'm here for you. I care for you. I love you. I'm here to help you. There's confidence in prayer. You remember this, child of God, if you remember nothing else. The eternal God is thy refuge. No matter what you're going through in life, the eternal God is thy refuge. And thank God we can say, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Look at verse 6. We see his confession in prayer. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. You know, he just told the Lord not only where he was, but how he was. I'm brought very low. low. Do you know what David learned in that psalm? I'll tell you, do you know what he learned in the cave that day? He learned in that cave that day a lesson he mightn't have learned anywhere else. He learned that day in the cave there's nobody low enough that the Lord cannot reach you. Child of God, there's, there's no depth that you can get down into or find yourself that the Lord cannot reach you. His condition in prayer, verse 6, Verse number 7, we see his cause in prayer. It's here where we finish. Verse number 7, we see these. He says, Bring my soul out of this prison, out of prison. Now listen to this. That I may praise thy name. The righteous shall come past me about, for thou hast dealt bountifully with me. This is why he want release. This is why he want prayed. This is why he want brought out, so that he could praise the name of the Lord, that he could glorify to others what the Lord has done for him. His cause in prayer wasn't just to get out, you know. His cause in prayer was that the Lord would be exalted after being brought out of that deep, dark, miserable cave where he was. 
child of God this morning. This is a mass kill of David. It's a psalm of instruction. This was what Psalm 142 is, a psalm of instruction. How you and I ought to pray, how you and I ought to think when we are praying in desperation. Do you see him in prayer? He's crying in prayer, complaining in prayer. He sees his condition in prayer, his calamity in prayer, his confidence in prayer, his confession in prayer, his cause in prayer. When there's nobody or nothing around us, child of God, you remember there's one above us who cares for us. And even though the way is dark and dismal, He alone is there for us in our darkest hour. May we learn in our desperate hours to look above us and see Him that cares for us and who understands us, and who's there to bring us out of what we think is impossible. May God bless His Word to our hearts this morning. Our